Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad removed the dust. Removed the dust of unbelief. Prophet Muhammad brought us. Brought us a good relief. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. May peace be upon him. May Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah, and blessings and peace be on the Messenger of Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and welcome back to another episode of this series, More Than Honey and Black Seed. We aim by this series to broaden our, our understanding of the prophetic uh, medicine, the guidance of the Prophet with regard to the preservation and promotion of uh, human health. And uh, we've covered many, many topics. I promised you last time that this time we're actually going to start to talk about medicine. Because up until now, we have been talking about what? The general guidance that Islam provides for humanity uh, towards a healthy lifestyle, towards a healthy lifestyle in every regard, in faith, in creed, acts of worship, in our actions, customs, and uh, character, and so on and so forth. And that is the greatest contribution of Islam to uh, the preservation and promotion of human health. We also said that there is specific advice with regard to health and sickness. And we also said that Islam contributed largely to the preservation and promotion of human health by the liberation of the human mind, by giving respect to human uh, intellect, and we will see how, and we will see how that impacted the uh, development of medical sciences and the advancement of medical sciences uh, in the Islamic uh, civilization. So I'll be true my, to my promise, and we will talk today about medicines. But there are a few things that we have to remember, and I said that we will be repeating them over and over. Uh, first of all, Keep in mind that the miracle of, of this, uh, the inimitability of this revelation with regard to the issue of preservation and promotion of human health with, with regard to the medical science, uh, the miraculousness, is not necessarily related to one particular advice, to one specific advice, but rather the entirety of this guidance, the collective guidance uh, that of, of this sharia, of this path Allah prescribed for us, for our spiritual sustenance and survival, for our mental sustenance and survival, for our sustenance and survival holistically in every regard and in every aspect. The whole sharia is good for human health, it's good for the preservation and promotion of human health, and we've covered this, or parts of this, and we've seen how. So that is number one. And why am I saying this? Because when we say that honey is recommended in, in, uh, in Islam, honey is good, many people can say that honey is good. Everybody knew honey is good. And even before Islam, some people talked about the benefits of honey. So this one particular issue may not be miraculous in and of itself to say that, you know, look, the Quran says, nas. in it there is cure for people. But people before may have recognized that honey is good for them, and honey has some uh, cure. The miraculousness, the inimitability, is not with regard to one particular ayah or hadith, is not, you know, does not pertain to one particular piece of advice, but rather to the entirety, and most importantly, all of this goodness, all of this perfection comes with out mistakes, and that is what sorts the revelation that comes from Allah, from the work of Hippocrates or the medicine of this or that great physician of the past. Could be a lot of good, but it will not be uh, uh, without mistakes. That revelation is without mistakes, and we can always uh, prove it. The other thing that I wanted to, to say here 
which is important, is that we can never encompass the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can only ponder over aspects of that wisdom that Allah makes manifest to us, that Allah permits us to see. But to encompass the wisdom of Allah is completely unwise to think that you can. If you think that you can, that's very unwise. Because what can you encompass? What can you comprehend? Can you comprehend how your intestines are working now? Can you comprehend how your heart is beating? Even the greatest cardiologist, the greatest heart surgeon, the, 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 the greatest uh, physicians, uh, uh, cardiologists and heart surgeons know every secret about the heart and how it beats and how it stops and how you know it, it recovers and so on. Would have, people would have not had problems then uh, with healths that are not, you know, uh, fixable by, by physicians. No, we know very little, brothers and sisters. Even Einstein, who had an IQ, it was said, of 180. Einstein knew a lot about physics, but did Einstein know that much about biology? Did Einstein know that much about other disciplines? Forget about, you know, all other disciplines, how much... Of physics did Einstein know? So we have to humble ourselves. Someone can say, well, that reminds me of uh, blind faith. No, that is not blind faith. Blind faith is when I tell you, come to the door of God through illogical, you know, m mental processes. Or, you know, I, I try to persuade you of a particular religion with illogical, not persuasive argument. But once you have come to the door of God, you start to receive from God. It is now time to submit. You have reached the door of God. You have used your logic that's good for you. Uh, you have used it. You are certain. And you use it, to, use it also to increase your certainty in your deen to increase your certainty in uh, your Lord, to increase your certainty in your prophet. But once you recognize this is my Lord who created me, you start to take with complete submission. Servitude, the Ubudiya, is showing complete love and adoration mixed with complete humility and subjugation. And without that, you're not an abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not a good servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we submit, we contemplate, we ponder over the wisdom that is shown to us, that Allah permits us to see, makes manifest to us, but we never say that, you know, we make, we rinse our mouth because it's healthy. No, we rinse, our, yeah, good thing it's healthy, you know, alhamdulillah, that of the wisdoms, of the bounties and favors of this particular practice that Allah you know, wanted of us is that it is also healthy and the prayers and so on and so forth. So we're only looking at the wisdom that is shown to us. And certainly in this particular uh, series, we're talking, we're looking at the, 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 the wisdom that pertains to health only. The other issue that I wanted to say, and it is important to emphasize it, is that guiding Humanity to a healthy lifestyle is the major, is the, is the, the most important contributor uh, to the preservations and human health Islam offered us. And the specific advice that we will be talking about does not really uh, constitute the greatest contribution. It is guiding humanity to a healthy lifestyle. The other issue is an answer to, the, to a question. Why are Muslims not healthier? The very quick answer, have you corrected for the other variables? What do I mean by this? You know, you cannot compare Muslims who live in war-stricken, you know, uh, war-torn, poverty-stricken environments that are unhealthy, polluted, and, and so on and so forth, to non-Muslims who live in environments, in environments that are completely the opposite. But if you stabilize all the variables, correct for all the variables, you will find, as we stated before, as we proved before and shown before, that as a single factor, Islam, but not Islam being born to Muslims, Islam that you practice. When you practice Islam, 
that is a positive factor. That is a factor that will contribute to the, your, to the preservation and promotion of your health as well as the health of the society. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to remind you of is this is not intellectual luxury here. We're not learning this for, you know, uh, enlarging, sorry, the boosting our repository of information so that we can roll off more, you know, arguments. We are learning this primarily and predominantly so that we can have better recognition of Allah, the Creator, the one who favored us with all of those blessings, and more recognition of the role of the Prophet, the chief God of humanity that conveyed all of this good to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, preventative medicine is an essential and integral part of medicine. Essential and integral part of medicine. Because an ounce of, pre of prevention is better than a pound of treatment. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of treatment. So preventative medicine is essential, is integral, and it actually comes first before you know the other types of medicine. Part of preventative medicine, and we talked about the healthy lifestyle, all of that healthy lifestyle is part of preventative medicine, part of the medicine that is important for the maintenance, maintenance of one's health. Uh, part of preventative medicine also, brothers and sisters, is the so-called anticipatory guidance. Anticipatory guidance. What do we mean by anticipatory guidance? If, uh, you know, some of you may be pediatricians, for instance. Pediatricians know that you're not a good pediatrician if you only treat illnesses, but you are a good pediatrician if you try to prevent illnesses. So before the child is mobile, before the infant becomes mobile, you need to warn the family, keep, make sure that, you know, dangerous things are far from the, the reach, Make sure the things are locked up. Make sure that this or that, you don't leave tablecloths hanging from the table. You don't leave him on a flat surface unattended because the child's becoming mobile now. May roll off and fall and something happens. So that is called what? It's called anticipatory guidance. The Prophet ﷺ had taught us so much about anticipatory guidance, but we will select only parts and pieces of that. Uh, there is a beautiful hadith reported by Muslim from Jabir radiallahu anhu in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أوكو السقاء وغطوا الإناء وأغلقوا الأبواب وأطفئوا السراج Various variant reports and some reports, you know, by إذا نمتم فأطفئوا السراج خمروا الآنية Various reports, but this, the, the, this particular report from uh, Jabir that Muslim reported has awku siqa, which means, you know, the siqa is the, the, the water, with the water skin, the water skin, the water bottle. Close it, shut it off, the water bottle. Wa ghattul ina, cover the dishes, cover the dishes or uh, pans. Wa aghliqul abwab, close the doors. When, you, when it's night, when it's night time, close the doors to, for, for protection for safety, for security, for privacy, for protection. And atfi usiraj, turn off your lamps. You know, they, they have the gas lamps. Turn off uh, your lamps. Uh, I want you to remember those because those are just prototypes of the advice of the prophets, that the Prophet ﷺ had given us in many other regards. But remember those until we come back from the break and then we will talk about them some more, insha'Allah, God willing. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. We are covering the manners in Islam that a Muslim is supposed to have in Islam. There is a strong link between having good manners and piety. And then he said, I guarantee a dwelling in the highest rank of Jannah for the one who perfects his manner. That indeed, truthfulness leads to piety, to righteousness. And righteousness and piety leads to Jannah.
uh, the Prophet Sallallahu used to always uh, maintain family ties. Gentleness in Islam means to treat people with kindness and with tenderness. Prophet Muhammad brought the light, Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight, Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Alhamdulillah, welcome back. Uh, so back to anticipatory guidance. Anticipatory guidance the Prophet ﷺ given us in, in with regard to what you should be doing before you go to bed. The Prophet ﷺ said, shut off the, the mouth of the water skin. And the Prophet ﷺ said, cover your dishes. He said, close the doors. He said, turn off the lamps. Turn off the lamps. Uh, how is this good anticipatory guidance? It is very, it is, it is self-evident, self-evident. First, the idea of covering, covering, you know, certainly if you, if you, if you close the, the mouth of the wearer's skin, nothing will go inside and, and so on and so forth. But the idea of covering in general, covering your pen, covering your utensil, the Prophet ﷺ is alerting us to an important fact that has been proven you know, the pasteurization of milk, Pasteur, pasteurized milk. Pasteurized milk actually takes from this fact. The fact is that the bugs, disease, germs do not emanate from inside the food. That's what many people thought before. Because many people, they thought, you know, they leave the food for some time. And then they come back and they find the little worms, they fi find fungus, they find lots of things, you know, you can, so food goes bad, and people thought, people thought that there is something internally within the food that would make it go bad. Now this is, or everybody knows that this is untrue. Do you buy canned food? You probably do. You know, the idea of canned food per se the idea of canned food per se uh, is a proof on the incorrectness of that uh, old ancient idea that the, the germs would emanate from inside the food itself. Actually, the germs come from outside. That's why you need to cover the dish, to cover the pans. This is beautiful, not only because it shows the beauty of this hadith, the idea of canned food, pasteurized milk, canned foods, and so on and so forth, but it is beautiful because people in the past thought that life emanates from inanimate objects, right? People in the past thought that life... This is a big issue of controversy here in dispute between atheists and people who prescribe to religions that, you know, believe in God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. If they can prove that life, life happens on its own without creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this will never happen. Allah uses a beautiful argument against that idea, am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in, am humul khaliqun. أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَلْ لَا يُقِنُونَ أَمْ عِنْدَهُمْ خَزَائِنُ رَبِّكَ أَمْ هُمُ الْمُسَيْتِرُونَ Have they been created without a thing? In other words, without a creator. Or are they themselves the creators? Or have they created the heavens and the earth? All of this is untrue. All of this is untrue. Because all of this is basically impossible. You cannot be created without a creator, and you can. And if you can't be created without a creator, it's even more difficult, more difficult, to have been created by yourself. Because what does creation mean? Creation means to bring to existence that which was not existent. So if you were not existent, how could you have 
not being existent or being non-existent, how could you have created yourself? Impossible. But what is even more impossible than this is to have created the heavens and the earth because the heavens and the earth came way before you. When he came here, he found the heavens and the earth and everything was set. So it is more impossible. That's called escalation of argument. And then Allah switches the argument from the issue of the creation to the issue of control. Or, or did they have the treasures of your Lord? Or are they in control? So switching argument, escalation, switching, which is, which is a beautiful way uh, of a logical uh, argument. Now, have they been created without a thing, without a creator? Some people try to say, yes, that happens. Proof on this is, look at the food. You leave the food, and then you come back and you find worms. The worms are, you know, live creatures. They walk and so on. Or they crawl, creep. Live creatures, they, they came from inanimate objects. Untrue, untrue. The canned food, every can, every can, in fact, proves them untrue. Destroys that theory. Every can of food destroys that theory. Because canned food means what? Means that you, you have this, you put this food inside a container that will not allow any germs from outside to go inside. And if you do this, you preserve uh, the food in, in this way. Okay, so the Prophet ﷺ refers to this by saying, غَطُّ الْإِنَاء Cover the dishes, cover the utensils. So, أَوْ You know, close the, the mouth of the water skin. غَطُّ الإناء. Cover the dishes. And he says, أَغْلِقُ الْأَبْوَاب أَغْلِقُ الْأَبْوَاب Now, أَغْلِقُ الْأَبْوَاب uh, is, is that important? Yes. Do you have children at home? Yes. Do you want your children to be wandering around? You know, some kids w w wake up in the, in the middle of the night and, and, and so on and so forth. Not only, not only that you want to protect yourself from thieves and you want to protect yourself from, you know, people who will break in and, and this and that, but even for that very simple reason that you should close the doors, make sure the doors clo clo are closed so that you don't find your kids who may wake up at night wandering in the streets or wandering outside. So that is, that is for, for, our, for our safety. That is part of anticipatory guidance. That is part of anticipatory guidance. You know when the Prophet ﷺ teaches us to sit down when we uh, tie our shoelaces? Part of anticipatory guidance. Protection against accidents and trauma. Trauma, brothers and sisters, is the main cause of morbidity and mortality. It comes before cancer. Accidents and trauma, in terms of being a cause, a uh, culprit for morbidity and mortality, trauma comes before cancer. So to avoid trauma, you have all of this advice. Atfi siraj, turn off the lamps, turn off the lamps. The Prophet ﷺ even explained to us that a mouse can actually, uh, you know, flip that uh, gas lamp and cause fire, set the home on fire. So turn off the lamps so that, you know, you avoid that, that bad eventuality. All of this is anticipatory guidance, part of the preventative medicine, part of the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Inshallah, when we come back in the next episode, there is more to say and more about the principles of treatment, Inshallah. Until I see you then, enjoy the blessings and bounties of Allah on you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. Prophet Muhammad brought the light. Prophet Muhammad enlightened the sight. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad removed the dust. Removed the dust of unbelief. Prophet Muhammad brought us. Brought us a good relief. May peace be upon him. May peace be upon him.